Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex. Today is Saturday, September 17, 2022. And today's topic, uh, it's not so much advice, I would say, as uh, just uh, some commentary. I mean, this um, is coming from Reddit. Career advice, r slash career advice, career guidance. My apologies, I misspoke. r slash career guidance. And um, not so much asking for advice. In my belief, I think uh, this poster, this original poster already knows what to do in this sense. They they just want to get a feel for what others would. And, you know, there's no harm in doing so. Asking for a second take on what someone else would do in a situation such as this. Um, so let's, uh, I'm still going to keep it to 30 minutes. I mean, let's treat it like a 30 minute consultation. I will, I will give a professional opinion as a corporate cowboy on what to do in this particular circumstance. And, um, I, I've already read the question. I haven't read so much of the context, but Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. My boss, they say, my boss wants to take me out to lunch on my last day of work. I don't like him and he's 50% of the reason I'm quitting. What should I do? (laughs) All right, so... I think the form in which that question was written, how that question was composed, I mean, they already don't like the boss. And they're 50% of the reason why they're quitting. So they are a glass half empty type person. You could already tell they don't want to go out to lunch with this person, right? And it could be for a multitude of reasons. Maybe they were... I don't know, an exploitative, abusive boss, narcissistic, avarice. What's the, uh, what's the adverb for avarice? Avarice? Avarously? Just avarice. I believe it's just avarice. But if they weren't a good boss, why the fuck would you want to go out to lunch with them? Let me tell you why. Or, 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 or. You know what? Just the way the question was written, I thought it was so funny. Let's add some context to it. So that's the title, right? The title is, my boss wants to take me out to lunch on my last day of work. I don't like him. And he's 50% of the reason I'm quitting. What should I do? And they say, blow him off. Tell him off. I know he's only doing this to appear like the company man he should be. Not because he actually wants to. Come on, Reddit. What you got, it says. Oh, and then they provide an update. It says an update here. I really love the responses. Thank you all. Everything from fuck that shit. Give him a blowjob. Get a free lunch. Just go to be nice. Take the high road and humor him. Fake it because you might need his help someday. I mean, those were all... Uh, responses. Those were all, you know, possible responses, possible courses of actions that other Redditors had responded to this person's uh, post. And then ultimately they say, I declined his offer for lunch for multiple reasons mentioned in the comments, but mostly because I don't need slash want a recommendation from him in the future. I'm changing industries and he's a lifer in his current one. So chances are I will never, ever see him. And I don't have any respect for him as a leader or even a human being due to all of his bullshit he has made me put up with for the last few years. And I didn't burn any bridges, just politely declined and it was accepted with grace. Because he's a little bitch, it says. <laughs> oh, shit. There is 
There's plenty of jobs out there, guys. Don't be fake if you don't want to. You can always find something else better than what you're leaving behind on your own accord. I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer here. I'm just giving you a professional opinion as a corporate cowboy. What a corporate cowboy would do, how a corporate cowboy might approach this particular situation. Now, they say you don't have to be fake. Don't fake it till you make it. But you don't necessarily have to be fake. You don't have to go and humor the boss. Sure, it qualifies as free lunch, but your pockets aren't hurting if you're already planning on leaving. If you have a, an offer pending at another position for another firm, another organization, or you're choosing to go independent, right? It won't hurt. Show up for this lunch. Make it an exit interview on your boss, right? You can get to know him, get to know them, because it might be a female too. Get to know them on a personal level. What makes them tick? What makes them tick? What, they, what do they know about their particular industry? If they are a lifer, you don't think, you don't think this person at one point had ambitions, had dreams before becoming a lifer, before settling into a position that turned them into an asshole boss? I'm not saying you're there to do emotional work. I'm not saying you're going as their shrink. Not at all. You're still going there, you know, with little skullduggery in mind, wanting to get information. That's all. That's all. Even if you are exiting the industry, it's nice to know how the industry works. Why you weren't promoted. What it takes to get promoted. What, what do they know about getting promoted? What your boss knows about promoting and developing a team. You're gonna, you can further explore all that shit you had to put up with the last few years. You can explore why the inefficiencies exist. Why the ineffectiveness exists. Those are all possible avenues of discussion. And if you did such a swell job of declining the invitation and they accepted it with grace, you pretty much played into their hand. You pretty much admit that they're only doing it to appear to be the company man that they should be. And what do you do instead? You don't even move. You don't even move with the professional grace of the exit interview. Instead, you decline. You, you decline and not make him out to be the company man. He might want to be, right? But I understand, I understand being a corporate cowboy is not for everyone. Maybe you don't have your sights set on helping this individual. You claim you might never ever see them again. You are changing industries. It doesn't mean you're changing planets. It doesn't mean that it does not mean you won't ever see him again. You just have a lower likelihood, a lower possibility, less chance of seeing them in the field that you're going into. Personally, though, I like to see the interconnectivity. What your what your former now, what your former boss does and how it impacts the industry on a whole. Individuals in your boss's position across the industry, what their impact is. And you only learn that if you yourself haven't held their position before by asking them, by appearing interested, by appearing curious, even if you are exiting, unless, unless it was a knockout, drag out confrontation, which it doesn't sound like because you got invited to lunch, right? You weren't outright fired. You're quitting. You're resigning. Don't be the sore loser because you had to put up with some shit. There, I, I don't think there is enough context 
in this post to let me know that the boss is an asshole. They don't go into the context. They, they, they don't go into any of the circumstances that would allow us to infer their boss is an asshole. Maybe the boss has high expectations, has high standards, only wants high performers, the highest of performers, and will accept no substitutes, no other... Uh, <laughs> Damn, what's the, what's the term I was looking for? We'll, we'll, we'll not accept an inferior performance, a subpar performance, and you wanted extra days off. You wanted to slack off. You don't want to take on obligations, the kinds of which would develop you into a leader later in the future. I mean, sure, you claim that you don't respect them as a leader, much less a human, but we don't know what took place for you to get to that state of mind, for you to arrive at that state of mind, at that state of being with your manager, with your former boss. The exit interview, ladies and gentlemen, the exit interview, just like the recruiting interview, the hiring interview can go both ways where an organization can interview you and you interview the organization to see if there is a fit. The exit interview likewise is not to be wasted. Don't waste that opportunity. Every opportunity is a good opportunity. The exit interview. I feel like there is plenty of context missing here. And while I appreciate the fact that you won't stick around in the same industry forever unless you commit to being a lifer, unless you've got the kind of passion that makes you appear crazy, that makes you appear obsessed, that might turn you into an asshole boss to some, to some, right? Because even with this post, we don't know what the industry is. We don't know what the actual demeanor of the boss is. We aren't given any examples where we might be able to draw that conclusion. So it begs the question, why quit? Why are they only 50% of the reason that they are quitting? And not 100 fucking percent. If the boss was an asshole... They'd be a hundred fucking percent of the reason why I'm leaving. That or, you know, I'm doing some extracurricular work to remove them. <laughs> a corporate cowboy does extracurricular work to remove an asshole boss. A complete asshole boss. But if they're only 50% of the reason you're leaving and you just don't like them, you're a glass half empty type of person. Nothing wrong with that, but if in the future you find yourself also not liking others and they being 50% of the reason why you're leaving, I mean, the common denominator is, gonna, is likely, will likely be you. And maybe you were just a shit subordinate, a shit employee to take on. And I'm not saying you're playing into the boss's hand, right? By allowing them the opportunity, allowing them to appear like a company man. Again, this you, you shouldn't care what the boss's motivations are. You should already have an agenda in mind, a program to follow. At the exit interview during the lunch, feel free to ask the questions. Write them down beforehand as professionally as possible. Don't be blunt with it. Don't just come out swinging, guns blazing, asking them and accusing them about ineptitude, about in, in, incompetency. None of that. A corporate cowboy is a consummate professional. 
even on your way out. Let's take a look at what some of these comments are saying. Because uh, apparently the original poster liked some of them. And I get the feeling that they already had their mind made up going into this inquiry, going into this, going into posing this question on Reddit, on career guidance. The first comment says, I had a pretty big argument with my boss six months before I transferred. It got pretty bad. We both said a lot of things we shouldn't have. At the end of the day, after I transferred, I had to ask for a letter of recommendation from him. He did it and it was great, but having to go back and ask feels pretty degrading to yourself. Take the higher road and leave on a good note. That makes sense. That makes sense. If you're in an industry that requires recommendation letters and uh, the players, the, the, the major players are known or reputation just gets around, Re the, the the requirement of recommendation letters is is not a trivial matter it, it's not just a small uh, a, a small formality when it comes to recruiting when it comes to hiring recommendations recommendation letters mean a lot recommendations are invaluable especially when they're coming from capable professionals in any particular field of work Taking the high road and leaving on a good note, I think, means going to lunch. And that's good. I probably would have done the same thing. So I'm on board. I'm in agreement with that comment. The next comment says, exact same thing happened to me when I left my last job. I loved the job, but 100% left because of him. <laughs> He didn't speak to me the entire last two weeks except for the invite for lunch as a place to be determined so I could choose. I enjoyed a nice fat steak and desserts on the company and left after lunch. If I never speak to him again, it will be too soon. But I enjoyed my steak. Now, as pragmatic, as pragmatic as that answer sounds, as yeah, as pragmatic as that answer sounds, having not spoken with your boss the last two weeks of works, they still give the professional courtesy of taking you out to lunch. And you still have the professional courtesy, still have the professional consideration to go enjoy a steak. And one dollar, a dollar says that lunch wasn't quiet. There had to have been some small talk, maybe some serious talk, maybe some professional conversation taking place. <laughs> A corporate cowboy would choose that last option. Take the steak, enjoy it, and create better company, even on your way out. The next one states here, go to lunch. You can pretend for 30 to 45 minutes. You've endured him this long. How tactful can you be? How tactful can you be? It's a question. How tactful can you be? Using much finesse and not allowing your emotions to take over. Explain to him what it was that he did that made you want to quit. Go out with class, not as an ass. Right? Um, oh, and then the comment below that says true, but then be prepared to go Dutch. Now, nah, don't go Dutch. If you're going to, I think if you're going to air grievances, grievances that in my opinion should have been aired during the, uh, employment relation, during the work, during the, 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 during the work agreement, while you were employed, you should have aired your grievances. If now you're choosing to do so, leaving during lunch, I mean, there's, there's still a tactful way to do it and not have to pay half, right? You can just walk out on the motherfucker. Thank him for lunch. Finish your steak. Be curt. 
be polite, be professional, dip out, but be prepared because the whole time you're doing so, you're you're going to be glowing bright. You're going to be burning bright and necessarily burning that fucking bridge. If what you want to do is put this person in their place, if they've reduced themselves professionally to such an extent that you you can't stand the sight of them for 30 to 45 minutes, be a professional. Kill that fucking steak and then kill this motherfucker. I mean, with words, with words. Kill this motherfucking bitch with words. And then drop the mic or the fork and the knife. Bid them a good day and dip. Thank them, of course, for the steak. (laughs) This next comment says, go to lunch with him. I know it sounds like it'll be gratifying if you don't go, but it isn't. And you'll unnecessarily burn a bridge. I'm going to tell you something that I wish something that I'm going to tell you something that I wish someone told me when I was younger. Always take the high road when it comes to your career and never gossip or act with vengeance. I hope you'll never have to call on your soon-to-be former boss, but if you do, don't let don't let his last memory be a negative one. Don't let don't let let don't let. Hmm. What happened there? I hope you'll never have to call your soon-to-be former boss, but if you do, don't let his last memory be a negative one. Yeah. And and leave on a good note. In the end, you want to leave on a good note. This next comment is plain. Get a steak. Yeah, to the point. Go get, go get your fucking steak. Ask them a couple of questions on the way out. What uh, <laughs> what prompted them to become a lifer in the position they're at now? And if you want to, I mean, don't pry, p p r y p like Peter. Don't pry into their ambitions, right? But you could ask them about dreams. You could ask them about potential plans within the industry or within the company. But if they're just like, if they really are just settled into middle management, shit. Explore middle management. You got the motherfucker for a whole lunch hour. (laughs) Or you got the bitch. You got the motherfucking bitch for a whole lunch hour. Don't fake it. Be genuine. Be a professional. Consummately. A consummate professional. This next comment here says, "Go." I would go to lunch. I would go to lunch. It says... You never, ever know. (laughs) This person says never, ever. Like the original poster says, I will never, ever see them. I doubt it. I really do. The world is a small fucking place. And there are only so many people. And if this person is in this industry as a lifer, you might might cross paths with them again if you interact with that industry. You don't know what this person is up to. You don't know what, what what your boss... You don't know what your boss is actually capable of. If you hate them so much, I mean, why why don't they reciprocate on the hate? No. Instead, they extend an invite to a lunch. Your last lunch, right? Take the lunch, man. I would go to lunch, they say. You never ever know where life will lead you and you could end up working together at a future job or even running into him in your personal life. I have been in your situation many times, not necessarily on my last day of work, but had to act nicely to people I knew I that I knew but had to act nicely to people I knew didn't like me or made my job rough. But I try to remember this. If anything, you'll leave knowing you did everything the right way and can have a clean slate behind you. Good luck in your new path, they say. Yeah, that's right. That makes sense. The next comment here says, enjoy the free lunch. Focus on the good things you've accomplished together and forget he's part of the reason you're leaving. Damn, diplomatic as fuck. I like this person's comment already. 
Focus on the good things you've accomplished together and forget he's part of the reason you're leaving. I'm sure if he's 50% of the reason you're leaving, there's 50% uh, there's 50 area to fill with conversation of the good times. And if there aren't any good times, again, there's always option C for corporate fucking cowboys. On some corporate cowboy shit, interview them, okay, as you make your exit. Enjoy the free lunch. Focus on the good things you've accomplished together and forget he's part of the reason you're leaving. If there is any piece of constructive feedback you have for him, you should tell him in a positive way, they say. I believe anyone, well, really everyone, I believe everyone deserves an opportunity to learn from their mistakes. Also, rejecting the invitation will give him a chance to criticize your professionalism with the rest of the team. So, I would totally go. If you have a reputation already with the team, it may or may not be hard for the for that boss to uh, to soil your name in your absence. But if you don't have a reputation with the team or with the company, with the organization, and you reject the invitation for lunch, yeah, expect to get bad mouthed a little bit. Because this person's a boss. They didn't make it there for being a fucking dunce, right? They might have made it through seniority, but even having lasted as long in seniority to then occupy a position of power doesn't come just by chance. Doesn't doesn't come just because they fill the spot, which is necessarily what seniority means, but I've seen plenty of seniors get passed over and they've been in an organization long enough. You've got to have a certain set of skills to be a boss. And that doesn't mean everybody, that doesn't mean everyone in a supervisory position is a good boss. But uh, that I think really speaks more of the company's processes for selecting and retaining talent and management and, you know, capable, competent management. Uh, the In response to that, when somebody says, yeah, worst case scenario is you get a free meal and an awkward hour. Best case scenario, you have a free meal and a good conversation and both of you are able to grow and move forward from it. There you go. I'm an advocate for facilitative conversation. I'm an advocate for mediation. I'm an advocate... For arbitration as well. Anything that'll keep a client out of court. I mean, almost anything that'll keep a client out of court. <laughs> I'm still a professional. But having a facilitative conversation where, whereby maybe both of you could share some kind of constructive criticism. Again, we don't know the context at the opening that this person claims that their boss is a fucking asshole. But for what reasons? They're unknown. We don't know this information. So the boss might have been one with high expectations. One who was difficult to satisfy, difficult to please. There's nothing wrong with that. And this person is already bad-mouthing the boss on a social media forum. Sure, they don't dox them. They don't identify them. But, you know, one can only be so professional until they are not. Again, we don't know what industry they're in. We don't know how old they are, their education and all that. To take them on as an actual client, that's background information you absolutely must have. I mean, me here, I'm just freestyling off the dome. Telling you to go enjoy a fucking steak and while you're at it, you know, fulfill some side objectives, some secondary objectives. Learn a little bit more about the industry through your boss. An exit interview. You can't go wrong with that. And if conducted correctly, you might have a recommendation. If conducted correctly, you might have another professional in your network. Someone you might be able to convince to later pull strings for you, to later 
be your own wedge. Be a lever that you can pull. Someone within your sphere of influence. It just takes you acting like a professional. It takes you being like a professional and being recognized. Right? Because it's after hours. You're not on the job. You're not on the clock. You can talk freely when you may not, when you might not be able to during business hours while at work, right? It's strictly work, all business, all business, all professional. But that's two different things, business and professional. You can still be a professional after hours. And now you can talk freely. It's no longer about business. You're at, you're eating lunch, you're eating dinner, you're having a steak right? Still professionalism in mind. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about their professional life. What values they inform their view of professionalism with, their pers- their per- professional perspective, right? And I, I think this comes easier to some than others because again some folks don't have the social skills the uh the 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 tools the tenacity to start conversation much less accept an invitation with uh anxiety and nervousness and 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 angst so much of that going around in society nowadays i feel like the outgoing, those who are outgoing, those who are social are becoming less and less. I mean, for the right reasons. You've got those who, you know, just can't read a rule, don't have the ability to pick up on social cues and just will blurt out. You know, I get it. Everybody's on a fucking spectrum. Some are more functional than others. Others are less functional than, than, than a lot. <laughs> I'll read uh, maybe one or two more. Actually, nah, I'm going to cut it right there. It's 30 minutes. I said this would be quick. Every episode, is we're keeping it to about the length of a preliminary interview. Things that I might address with a prospective client. Sure, I mean, I, I would be charging, but you can be grateful. You can be thankful and appreciate the fact that these are free. If you'd like to uh, sponsor one, by all means, you can join our Patreon. That's uh, Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Follow the Instagram page. That's the Corporate Cowboys with a Z. And if you want to shoot a donation, keep this operation not for profit, by all means, we would appreciate that. It's all going towards, you already know, business expenses and legal fees. It's a Venmo. There's a PayPal. There's a Cash App. Shoot us a couple of dollars or send us something questionable at P.O. Box <laughs> 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95741. And that'll be forwarded to us. And if you request some kind of response, you know, we'll try to reach out. Take care of yourself. Have a nice situation. Have a <laughs> have a nice weekend. Take care of yourself. Have a nice weekend. We'll catch you next time.